Watching stock prices is certainly very different than the underlying indicators. With central bank intervention, markets have acted completely out of whack. As we have noted for quite some time, when central banks are easing, stocks can rise. They can create a bubble, but they will not stop it from popping. Always remember the quote, never let a good crisis go to waste. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at several economic indicators. I'm going to show you how important these are. We're going to look at the fund flows. We're going to look at bonds. We're going to look at the PMIs. I'm going to show you data from all over the place. So let's get into it right away. Here you can see the growing disparity in between the S&P 500 and the 10 year yield. We have watched the yields coming down further and further and further. And of course we have seen the S&P and stocks in general rising higher and higher. Now you can see over the last few trading days that things have changed a little bit as the 10 year yields have climbed up. But in general that disparity has been rather present since the beginning of June and we'll watch this as time goes on to see if it continues but usually that these things here end up managing themselves they end up coming back together now whether that means that the 10-year yields are going to rise dramatically or whether the S&P is going to have to fall there is a huge disparity in between the two and I'm interested to see how this plays out Speaking of the 10-year yields, the decline in 10-year bond yields has been in line with falling growth. You can see how these two match up. We're looking at the 10-year yield as well as the ISM manufacturing PMI. It happens to move in lockstep. For the most part, you can see this going back since March of 2010, and it has looked like these have moved together. Well, let's see what happens, but many have made the assumption that yields will Will continue to fall if that's the case we can expect the PMIs to do so it all depends on what we have in store in the future here we don't really know we can't make those assumptions but at least the data that we have right now shows that both of these will continue to fall at what pace well that remains to be seen some of the most important data is available to you through the EPFR. Now they take all of the fund flows, whether it's bonds, whether it's stocks, they look all around the world, different countries, they put it all together and they give us this really good set of data. Now it shows you where money is moving into, where money is moving out of. We have seen the stock market trading on very low volume, even as it hits higher highs. The bond rally has been underpinned by huge inflation flows global bond fund flows you could see the tremendous spike that we have noted basically throughout 2019 this has been at the same time we have seen all of this new highs being produced in the stock market many people are looking at it thinking now is the time now is the time but it looks like the big investors the big institutional money have not been doing the same thing as the seven share of amazon type investor okay very big difference there's a great disparity in between those two now this here just shows you what's happening with bonds here you can see equity funds have seen huge outflows since december but the pace is easing so that just showing you that information i've been covering this now for quite some time if you look at this data from basically the middle of 2018 maybe september october time frame it really gets to be more exaggerated we have watched this and it isn't a good sign when you are noting that there's huge outflows in equities at the same time the stocks are moving higher you know that we have an issue i'll talk more about that in a second but just wanted to give you the numbers there because it is important to follow this data it is very clear to me what's happening with the money with the institutional money it's going in one direction now you as the investor you have to decide what is best for you but I'm just showing you the data as it is presented I've been criticized saying this is fake this is not real you know you have to look at the EPFR you have to pull that data up yourself so that you can actually do your own due diligence and see the information not sure why anybody would say it's fake at all but anyway there it is. Yes. 
CTA long SMP 500 positioning near pre Q4 level. So basically we're looking at the computer algorithms and they are right now buying up the SMP 500. So if we look at what's happening specifically with the computer algorithms, it seems like they are moving really towards the stocks, trying to get that extra leverage, trying to be able to purchase more and more of those taking the risk because they are able to sell in an instant they don't have to do what an average investor does. They buy and sell in these fractions of a second. But this is what I really wanted to touch on. Buybacks are the most important driver in our demand supply framework and should sustain at very high levels absent a large decline in earnings. Basically, what they're saying is that we've been seeing a lot of buybacks historically, they're going to continue into the future. And so at this point, you don't have to worry because the buybacks will sustain the market. Investors may be buying bonds, the investors might be having their fund outflows from equities, but you don't have to worry because stock buybacks are there, easy monetary policies from the Federal Reserve and other central banks. So nothing to worry about. Well, that's up to you to decide. Global manufacturing PMI, you can see the direction that this has headed basically through 2018 into 2019. We have seen this coming out of Europe, out of China, out of the US. No matter where you look, the same conditions apply. And that is simply that we have the slowdown that is taking place. If there is a China deal, this will be very positive for stocks, for the economy in general. If we have easy monetary policies from the central banks, of course, that is going to be very positive as well. Well, global chip making equipment sales seen shrinking 18% in 2019. We have the trade issues going on right now, China and the US really at the forefront of that. But there have been all sorts of tariffs on all different countries. And it is very clear to me what is happening. Here you can see the semiconductor sales year over year declining and that tells us where we are headed. This particular model is just trying to show you where the expectation is seen leveling off in the coming months. Semiconductor industry capital spending growth history and forecast. This just shows you the decline that is being experienced today, how that was in the past. It had happened before where we were in the negative. This isn't the first time that's the annual percentage change moving down right here. Not looking good if you see 2019's numbers, of course, but it can grow out of this. It is simply a matter of the trade issues being resolved as well as new big deals need to be formed. And I want to leave you with this right here. It is so important to understand what to do with this information. I've made myself clear on so many videos, but I know that there are always new people attending these. And I wanted to be clear about this. The most important factor regarding your asset allocation is the economic cycle. The best way to improve your portfolio is to position according to the direction of the economic cycle. Sectors and assets perform vastly different depending on the direction of the economic cycle. When the economy is cycling down, defense of sectors greatly outperform cyclical sectors. Remember that, okay? Because a lot of people, they simply just buy into what companies they know and they think that this is going to be the best company ever and I'm just going to hold it for eternity. That's not what these big companies do. And these big companies are the ones that throughout these cycles, so beyond one cycle, they are able to persist. A lot of people go bankrupt thinking that they can time this market, thinking that they can be very strategic about what they're doing. And unfortunately, they lose their shirt. Right now at this time in 2019, we cannot be investing the same way we did, let's say back in 2017. It's a very different ball game. If you look at what's happening with the EPFR fund flows, you're going to see what investors globally are doing. We are talking about countries all over the world, how they're moving their money in and out. This gives us the details that we need to see. I show you it all the time here on this channel, but we're not just going to simply look at the price of stocks and see that this is the best thing to do simply because they're going higher. That is not wise and people are being ignorant of reality. Yes, you can buy into stocks today, they can be worth more tomorrow, but it's so important not to simply chase the wave. If you're trying to ride that wave, you could end up getting caught and pulled down below. This has happened so many times to people. Look at what happened in the year 2000 when all 
of these tech companies, they started riding really high and we didn't see the NASDAQ touch its previous high. I believe it was for 14 years. You don't want to be stuck in that. Yes, with inflation, with the central banks devaluing the currency, you can get pushed back up to that point. There's no doubt about it. But how long will it take? If it takes 14 years, are you going to be satisfied with that? I'm not sure that's the case, but of course, that depends on your personal situation. A lot of people are hoping and praying, crossing their fingers and toes when they hit that buy button, but they are not prepared for any potential risk. So that's it. I'm going to end it there. If you found it informative, hit the like button. If you want to support this channel, you can hit that like button. I do appreciate it very much. If you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have everything you need from top to bottom A to Z. All the details are in the link in the description. If you want to watch this video here, it covers what you need to know about what's happening in the economy, then definitely click on it and I will see you there.